beginninggenealogist.com. Hope you're having a good day today. Today I wanted to talk about something that many of us overlook. And I know that there are some times I have to actually remind myself to go and, mm, I better capture a little bit of this part of the story because it is very important. And I was reminded of it when I saw in an email a list that someone had pointed to. It actually posted a link to an interesting article on avoiding genealogical pitfalls. And there were a number of wonderful points, one of which was um, don't forget to speak to, speak to your living relatives and, and capture conversations with relatives, not just elders, but others in the family. Capture their story and get as much as you can because you never know. Certainly life brings about its own surprises and changes. But what that reminded me of was a little bit beyond that. There's something else that many, many researchers forget to do. And that brings me to today's topic, which is telling your own story. I want you to imagine a hundred years from now, someone's going to pass down to a great-grandson or great-granddaughter or great-niece or nephew who's going to open up a trunk full of data or open up your old files and say, wow, this is really exciting about our family history going back to the 1800s or 1700s. And they're going to be really, really excited, but someone is going to ask the question, who put this information together? This is so interesting. They're going to be fascinated with the individual himself or herself that collected and compiled that data. And oftentimes people are so busy capturing the data and being so meticulous with their records and developing their filing system, but they forget one person's story to tell and that's their own. Now when I talk about telling your own story, there are two approaches that you can take to that. Number one is your life story. Just as you're capturing the history of your, your favorite ancestor uh, and you're writing a chronology of their lives, certainly you want to write a chronology of your own life. And there are certain points that you know better than anyone else will know. The key events that happened, things that stood out in your childhood, things that helped mold you as you were approaching adulthood and things that became important to you personally. Well, that's part of the story and, and it's very important to capture that. A lot of people have started doing that, particularly those who have been able to merge two passions, family history or genealogy, with uh, a craft such as scrapbooking where they're capturing certain events in their lives and that's something that's really really wonderful and many individuals who have that as as an interest or a hobby have been able to consider developing their own book of me sort of their own personal book and that's something that certainly is is applauded i support that and then there's another part of the story as well. And this is something that really people forget to tell. And I have found from my own experience that many are more interested in that story, which is your research story. The first time you decided to go and pursue a family line, I'm sure you have a story of your reaction the first time you went to the archives or went to the genealogy library or the family history center or in more recent years the first time you got on Ancestry or on, an, on another online source and the first time your eyes saw a document that reflected your family. I know I can share stories when I've taken people to the archives for the first time and the moment they actually see an ancestor, how they reacted, how their heart just sort of skips a beat. Well, many of us have similar stories in terms of how we became just a person who was curious in the family and how we made that transition and how we became a genealogist and, be, and to really decided to go after that story more in depth. Tell that story as well. Particularly, I know that many of us hope that there's someone who's listening, who's telling, um, um, you know, another member of the family, hey, let's listen to what grandma so-and-so or uncle so-and-so or auntie so-and-so has to say. She has found some information on the family. The moment you share the 
story on how you found it, how you looked and gee, you ran out of names, you didn't think you had it, someone suggests change the spelling and oh my gosh, you found them and how you felt. That's a critical story as well. Share your research story. Share the process that you went through and also share what you used to go from point A to point B, C, D, E, F, and G. It's very important that you also document your methods. What did the document say that you first looked at and what did you perceive it to be? And then how did you take a clue from that document and realize, ah, I can now go back 10 more years. Here's a name I didn't have before, and this person was 30 years old. Well, I know this person would be in the previous year census. Give examples of that. You'll be surprised that you might actually end up not just sharing a fascinating story, but you may also end up creating another genealogist in the family. So yes, your job is to tell the story. Your job is also to tell your story and remember to include as part of your story, your research story. You will be surprised how much this will be appreciated in the, in the generations to come. Anyway, that's it for today. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.